Hello and welcome to part two of the parallel to serial uh, PIC microcontroller uh, edition where we're going to be serializing our push buttons. We've got our schematic in front of us. Uh, we're just going to pick up where we left off on our other video, which is we're going to begin the coding. So again, we've got our, we've got our chip wired up. We've got our eight buttons here. And now we're going to begin some. We're going to begin going through the code. I went ahead and pre-written this code just because it would take forever for me to actually type all this in, and explain everything while I'm typing it. Because um, I don't know if you've seen other videos, I make mistakes here and there. So this just saves us saves us some mistakes. So um, anyway, let's start going through it. We basically we've created our project. We've uh, we've added the source file and the appropriate header file our chip. We've got our appropriate fuses for using our delay of 4, mil 4 megahertz. You will need the delay for this because we will be um, we will be delaying since we're going to be blinking an LED. We want to be able to delay so many milliseconds. And in fact, without further ado, we'll get into our to the blink pro the blink uh, function. I went ahead and built a couple of functions just to make coding easier. Um, the blink function basically all it's going to do is it takes in a number. You tell it how many number times you want it to blink. It's going to roll through. It's going to output high. Wait five mil, five hundred, half a second, or five hundred milliseconds. Output the low, and then just do that. And it'll do it however many times you want. So fairly straightforward. Put in number of blinks you want, and it does it. Now is where we get to our serialization uh, function. Basically, how to serialize the data. And there's another thing I'm going to put in the uh, description. Um, check this out. There's a there's a website that uh, I'm going to put the link to that talks about s parallel to serial and serial to parallel. I'm going to be doing another video uh, series after this one. In lesson four, we'll be doing the other way around. We'll be doing the serial to parallel, where let's say you have like a LED matrix that's sitting out there, and y you don't want to drive, you know, 64 LEDs. You know, you'll take and you can take a serial line, a 64 bit you know, binary number, serial line, shoot that to a uh, three or four different uh, shift registers and basically do it that way and have it parallel, you know, take the serial and go to parallel with it and that way you get your LED arrays put together. But for this one, but for the link, I'm going to add a link that uh, is a very helpful site. It's coded in assembly though, so um, it's not the CCSC. Um, which is what I'm going to be working, what I'm working with. But those of you that read assembly, that understand assembly, um, for by all means, look at it. Um, in fact, I'm, I may even uh, I haven't decided, but I may even do a video kind of explaining the assembly on that, so that it it makes everything crystal clear for everyone. But anyway, but for right now, we're going to look at the C code, and basically what we're going to do is we're going to declare, declare a couple variables. Um, our data variables, what we're going to store the actual binary number in. And when we come into this, you're going to want to output a high on your R clock, which in your main function you'll take and initialize your initialize your pins and all that all that jazz. So you're going to output a high on that shift clock, which that will cause your you know that will cause the transition to go. It'll shift in your data. Then you'll you'll go back low with that, so that way next time this function's called, you'll you'll have a low to high transition because remember it's it's positive edge triggered from what we talked about before. So we want a low to high transition. So you go high, that shifts the parallel data in, then go back low, and then you're going to output a low on the S load, and then you'll output a high. So make sure that it is low, and then you output a high on that, which will cause it to present the parallel data to the SR uh, flip flops. Which is the which of the serial registers? Now's when you're going to start um, loading your data in. You're going to build a for loop. Um, I like for loops. They just you know they're straightforward. Especially if you know uh, a definite number of times you want it to roll through. Uh, for loops are just fantastic. So we got eight. Basically, if i is less than equal or less than eight, then you know so we want this to run eight times. And now we're going to do some bitwise operations. For those of you that haven't done bitwise, I'll kind of I'll kind of explain this as I go. Basically, what you're going to do the less than less than equals. What that means is basically um, I'm going to shift once I w the variable data. You know, right now we've got like first time through. Let's say um, we've got zero in it. What we're going to do is we're going to shift that one digit to the left. 
And so your whatever number it is, you shift it one digit to the left doing that. And so this is how we're going to do it. As it rolls through, it's going to get a digit off that serial line, then move it to the left, then get the next digit, and then move both those to the left, and then move, get another digit, move to the left eight times so you build your binary, your 8-bit binary number. And then here's where we're basically going to check our data line. You're going to say if input, here's the old input function again. We're going to check to see it, it returns a 0 if uh, you've got ground on it and a 1 if you've got 5 volts on it. So we're going to check to see if it's a 1. Right. We're going to check to see if it's 1. If it's a 1, then data is going to equal a 1. Else if, if we otherwise then if it's 0, you know, not input, if it's 0, then we're going to put a 0 on data. And if you notice here, this is going to, this is a bitwise operation. We're actually oring this with it just to make sure that we, when you do that, see, because you'll have a 0 in the in the data, when it shifts it to the left, it puts a puts a zero in when it pushes it over. So you want to or in a one, or you want to quote or in a zero because you know uh, something or something is basically like the addition of those two. So you, that's how that works. So we're actually doing a bitwise or statement. We're oring in the one and oring in the zero, and then you're going to output your high and then go back to low on your shift clock. Basically, this will then get the next bit. You don't want to put this. You don't want to put this little combo at the top, because if so, you'll miss that fir first bit that's set in there. If we remember, we go back to our drawing. When this shifts over, H is going to be present on this register. So immediately, your first bit, your H, is going to be over here. Oh, and that's that makes me think it's another thing. Remember, your stuff is basically going to get flipped over when you put it in here. So if you connect the button that you want to be number one, or you're thinking that it's number one, you connect it to H, and in your head you're thinking that A is number one, well technically when it comes out, A is going to be the last one, if that makes any sense. So anyway, but, the, but it basically going back to what I was saying before, the H gets put Claire over to here instantly, so if you, if you flip-flop this clock, right off the bat you're basically going to shift out you're going to get rid of, it'll clear out you'll get rid of that uh that what that bit that that was here the, your your h bit will get stripped off so you always want to make sure make sure and do flip your your shift clock at the end so and it, remember it's positive edge triggered too so you're going to flip a high and then go back low and then basically it just runs that and then returns returns that returns that bit and if you notice, I'm using int 8. I don't know those of you that um, are familiar with CCSC know, know what this means, but those of you that aren't, what that means is I'm declaring an 8-bit integer. Um, I think the regular int by default, I think, is 16-bit. So um, just if you're, if you're memory conscious, you know, good programming, you know, good programming it warrants, you know, you use the least amount of space that you, know, you can. So um, I'm only declaring an 8-bit integer instead of just using int uh, in fact, I mean, I missed it. I'm noticing it now. I could declare this as an 8-bit and save save 8 bits of memory space. You know, just a just for good programming etiquette. But that basically finishes up our uh, HC597 uh, function that I made here. So we're coming down to our main function. Basically, we've got um, I declared kind of the same name variable again as data, and then now we're going to set up our tri-state registers. We're going to set up our uh, C port, basically port C, and here 2 is our input, because if we go up to our defines, C2 is our S data, so that's what we're going to be inputting. Everything else is pretty well outputs, so everything's output, 2 is our input, because it's set to a 1, output high on the S load, which enables S load, and then we initialize everything to low, everything else we initial to low. And that way, S load allows everything to be presented to the, you know, to the other. Remember where that was um, in the data sheet. And then basically, we're going to run it, and then we'll store that in our data. And then basically, I'm going to compare it to some hex numbers. And basically, if we compare it to hex one, two, four, eight, ten, twenty, forty, and eighty. And if you if you take those and convert those to binary, you'll see that the 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 one basically moves from, you know, one digit to another. And then basically, then we're going to call our deal. So basically, if it's if it's one, if it's the first button, then blink's going to be one. It's going to blink the deal once. And if it's the second number, it's going to blink it twice. Three, four. Basically, there's your inputs. And then I just put a little 10-second delay in there, uh, 
so it'll loop it just infinitely loops with the four but that's basically it that's that's basically how you how you put it together um, fairly straightforward main thing is is getting this getting this whole transaction this for loop well and I guess I guess this this these things too getting your latch clock and your for loop and then pretty much this whole function just getting this whole function put together is is kind of the tricky part but once you get it put together and it works like a charm it's it's very good uh, like I said you gotta remember your bitwise operations um, shift that shift that bit over every time that you roll through move that bit over so that way you build your build your binary number and that's basically it and then just call your function and then check it against you know whatever you want to check it against in my case I I checked it against some hexadecimal numbers and did it that way uh, basically this is this is uh, pretty much it uh, if any questions please feel free to post comments uh, then our next lesson lesson four we will be dealing with the uh, serial to parallel uh, shift register which pretty much the same pretty much the same deal it's just kind of you know just backwards you know just a little bit backwards kind of pretty much the same but different you know <laughs> so anyway well I thank you all for for watching these videos and please post any comments and please share with your friends and I'll be back with the next lesson thank you very much